James chapter 1. The Bible says James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That I word perfect there in verse 4 is where we kind of get our English word complete. When God says they may be perfect, He's not speaking of a sense of you perfect, but a sense of you are complete. And uh, for just a few moments tonight, uh, I want to preach for a little while uh, on chapter number 1 and verse number 2. And I want to preach on the subject of divers temptations. And I want to talk to you tonight about trials. Uh, this word temptation here in this passage is not talking about something you're tempted to do. But it's talking about temptations and trials that you go through in your life and you have to deal with every single day. And really God put this message and thought on my heart about preaching it anyway. Uh, this past week when I saw on Facebook uh, a dear friend and his wife lost their eight-year-old grandson and what that family there in Kentucky is going through and dealing with, and uh, how they've gone through a trial in their life. And uh, I want to try to preach a little bit on that tonight, and I trust the Lord will help us. And so you can go ahead and be seated. And uh, if I can tonight, uh, I just want to talk about uh, just a few things with you tonight. I want to talk to you a little bit about the outbreak uh, of trials about the outcome of trials, nothing that we know God doesn't do, and then with the help of the Lord, on the outlook for trials. And no doubt in our life, we're all going to deal with trials in our life. Now, I want to say this right off as I begin to preach this tonight, that my good days in my life, my days where I am blessed, and have good days and great days and days to rejoice about are much, much, much greater than my days that I deal with trials. And I want you to understand that tonight. Even though we all have trials, I think it's important tonight to understand that our good days far outweigh our bad days no matter who we are in our life and what station we are in our life. Now I want you to notice in verse number 2, the Bible doesn't say, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. It doesn't say uh, if you fall in divers temptations. The Bible says count it all joy when you fall. Why? Because Paul knew without a shadow of a doubt that everyone was going to have to deal with this in their life. Everyone's going to have to deal with trials and struggles and heartaches in their life. Sometimes it may be as simple as falling down and breaking your elbow. At other times, uh, it may be as complicated as losing a job or relationship gone bad or it may be dealing with someone that's hard to deal with uh, it may be in the area of business it may be in the area of health it, it may be uh, in bereavement Lord forbid or it may be in a lot of things of that nature but somewhere down the line we all have to deal with trials in our lives we all have to and it doesn't say if it says when 
Peter said something like this in 1 Peter 4, 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. You know what Peter's saying? Don't think it's a strange thing. Well, why would God allow this to happen to me? Listen, those things happen to a lot of people, not just you. Those things happen to a lot of individuals. And I'm going to be very honest. I do not understand why God allows some things to happen, but it's not for me to understand why, because I'm not God. I'm not in control. There's nothing I can do about that. But I do believe in all my heart that my good days outweigh outweigh my bad. If you believe that, say amen. Now, I want to give you some things about the outbreak of trials. Number one, trials come suddenly. Trials come suddenly. I don't have to say that to you. I know you know that tonight. But when you find here the word fail or the word uh, here of fall, it's the same word fail that you find when that, when that man was on the Samaritan road and the Bible says, oh, wait a minute, he fell among thieves. Uh, it's the very same word that you find here in James. That man fell among thieves. How? He fell suddenly. I mean, all of a sudden he finds himself being robbed by thieves. And so I want to say this sometime, trials come suddenly. Oh, listen, it's just a phone call. It's just quickly finding out some bad news. I thought about that little family. I could not imagine. I'm a dad. Even though my daughter's grown, it would be the same today. I could not imagine getting the phone call, especially that dad standing in that yard while that little boy's right there in front of him. And a man ran off the road to the mailbox and hit him and killed an eight-year-old boy and then left. I do not understand how a dad can look at that and deal with that except he understands they just come suddenly. And I watched a little video where that family the other night was all gathered around with all their friends and they were just singing and trying to worship God in the midst of that trial. I could not imagine. Trials come suddenly. Sometimes trials come separately. The Bible says diverse. That simply is an interesting word. It's almost a word that means like multicolored or a word like uh, Joseph's coat of many colors. In other words, when you think about diverse, you think about all different types of trials. Everybody has a different kind of trial. And by the way, sometimes you can have more than one. It can be multicolored in your own life. It can be diverse in your own life. And you can have more than one. And if you have more than one, I've had more than one trial at a time. I can't ever say I've had no major, major trials. I've, I've been through a few with death and family and different things. But I want to say this. Sometimes you have people walk in church on a Sunday and they're toting one or two or three uh, uh, diverse uh, trials, temptations in their life that they're dealing with. I want to say this. Now listen. Not only do those trials produce uh, in our life suddenly and they come they come sometimes separately and there comes many of them I want you to say, see secondly hear what James says about the outcome of trials he says knowing this that the trying of your faith work of patience but let her patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and tired wanting nothing if you need to lack wisdom let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and abrade if not and it shall be given him I want you to notice something real quickly notice this trials produce spiritual purity do you realize the word trying here the trying of your faith is kind of where we get our English word purging the trying of your faith is the idea of the purging the idea of God sometimes trimming off the rough edges why do you trim or purge or, or that bush or that tree? Because you want to get that off uh, uh, what is hindering the growth and what is causing it not to flourish and be what it needs to be. And sometimes uh, what God does is God is, is trying to purge our life through trials. Produces spiritual purity. There's a man by the name of George Sweeting that said this, A Christian's like a tea bag. He is not worth much until he has been through some hot water. I like that statement. A Christian's like a tea bag. He's not worth much until he's been through some hot water. Now, can I say this tonight? You may say, preacher, I'm done with the hot water. Well, you're done with it when God says you're done with it. But the thing is, if you're going through it in your life, let it purge your life. Let it make you better. And as we say many times, not bitter. Let it make you better. 
You know what? Somebody else might be bitter around you. Somebody else, Brother James, might have a bad spirit around you. But we don't have to be that way. We don't have to be that way. Hey, we can have a good, pure spirit in our life. And we can say, Lord, if I've got to deal with a trial, let that trial develop purity in my life as a child of God. Real quickly, watch this. Uh, trials, outcome of trials also produces spiritual stability. Spiritual stability. You know why? You would never really know what you're made of spiritually until you have to depend on the Lord and deal with trials. You never really know what you're made of until you have to go through that. And look, the Bible says in verse 3 uh, that our trials work in patience. Patience speaks of perseverance. Jesus, uh, James is telling us that one of the ways to be strong in the Lord is to persevere through those trials in your life. I'm telling you, friend, I'm going to be honest. I do not like this. I do not want to say this as... Um, God, I want you to do it again. But through some of the trials in my life is when I've realized on the grace and the perseverance that you have in the Lord and you go through a trial and you think, man, alive, I couldn't have done that without God. And I felt God during the middle of that and I probably prayed more and I trusted God more during that trial than while things were going well. That's why we get so blown away when a trial comes in our life. So many things have been going good in our life that we're not praying maybe like we should. We're, we're not, we're not uh, uh, hungry. We're, uh, we're not to the place of where we are, are, are really uh, uh, agonizing need but then that trial hits us suddenly and sometimes God uses that to help us with spiritual stability let me just say this and spiritual maturity he says but let patience have her perfect work that you may prevent an entire warning nothing James used the word perfect twice twice I want you to notice this it's a word that simply means complete or I like this one, full grown. Full grown. You know what God says to us, Brother Russell? God says to us, if you don't go through diverse temptations in your life, you'll never really grow and be full grown as a child of God. Now, I'll be honest with you. I've preached this before and said it before, and people look at me like I'm crazy, but there are things I do not like in the King James Bible. It doesn't make them wrong, but some don't like I don't like the fact that trials make me better so I'm probably going to have to go through them. I'd rather just be better without them if you don't mind. Don't look at me like that. You know what I'm talking about. None of us want that stuff in our life. None of us want to have to go through that. We don't want to have to face those trials. I don't want to see my brother or my brother or my sister or anybody else have to go through those trials. Don't want to see me have to go through those trials. But I do know if I have to go through them and according to the Bible, not if, when if I have to go through them I need to make sure that the outcome makes me better more mature full grown amen you think about it 34 years I've been a pastor 34 years of my life in the ministry if you think about this night 34 years guys there's been a lot of trials me and Miss Wendy could sit down and we could I can't say I've been through the devastating trial of some, but I've been through some. I wanted to pull the covers over my head and say, I think I'll take this day in life off. You ever been there? You ever got more? You ever just said, you know what? Get up morning and say, man, forget this. I, I, I'll try this again another day. We all go there. We all get there. But let it make you better. You go through tough times. Listen, if you have to deal with bitter people or if you have to deal with bitter circumstances or you have to go through things, before you get bitter yourself, before you get to the place where you're bitter, maybe sometime you need to say, Lord, you know what I'm going through. I wouldn't be going through it. And God, if you wouldn't mind, could you show me and help me to be better during this instead of bitter during this? Could you help me to be what I need to be can I tell you this? i am be honest with you. When I was going through a few times in my life, uh, in between churches, asking God what I was going to do, there, that, or the other, a few times I've been through a spiritual battle in my life and been very low. Boy, I trusted God more during those times than any other time in my life. Number three, what are the outlook of trials? 
Notice that James here says, count it all joy. Now, when you read that verse, I don't know if you like me, I read it and take it literally and I look at it and it says, count it all joy. You say, preacher, it's hard to have joy when you're going through a trial. Trials aren't, are certainly not easy. They're certainly not joyful. But James says, count it all joy. Brother Russell, I've never really understood that. I mean, I've preached this a lot of times. But I tried to figure, what does God mean by count it all joy? Count it joy. I found an interesting study that by a preacher named uh, Ken Trevett. And Ken Trevett looked at the word count. I never realized this. But the word count in this passage simply means to think ahead or look forward. So when he says count it all joy, he's not talking about you saying, Hallelujah, I've got broken leg. But the word count means to look forward, to go forward, count it all joy. In other words, don't lose your joy while you're going through it. That'll help you right there. Some of y'all have been preached to and taught. Well, even if you're going through a trial, y'all just wave your hand and say, praise the Lord. Well, you don't have to do that in front of me because I may not do that in front of you. That's right. Amen. I, young preacher boy, I used to see people sitting in church and they didn't have a smile or whatever. I'd get up there and I'd say, I'm going to tell y'all what, y'all are dead as a hammer. I don't know why you even bother coming to church. Got a little gray hair on my head, got a little older. I realized something. I hope I realized it before I got the gray hair. But I realized something. You never know what those people walked in those doors with. You don't know what they just came through. You don't know how hard it was just at their house or in their home or on their job. You don't know how hard it might have been uh, physically. And sometimes, let's just be honest, you come to church, you're there because it's right to be there, but you just hard to get an amen out of you. It's hard to get a wave hand out of you. Sometimes it's just like that. And God help us as preachers not to look at congregation because my Lord, we're like that sometimes too, sitting on the platform and going through. Now listen, God help us not to look at people like they're just dead spiritually because they just don't have a whole lot of oomph to them that night. Now I think you always ought to try to have a little oomph. You ought to at least smile and you ought to try your best. But James says, count all joy. He's not talking about, well, praise God, I lost my job today. Well, glory to God. I mean, I don't know what kind of mentality that is, but that is not even rational mentality. It's not. Jesus on the cross wasn't saying praise the Lord for the pain. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You understand? He wasn't, he wasn't rejoicing on Calvary. He was in pain on Calvary. He was hurting on Calvary. Amen? In human sense anyway. What he's saying is James is telling us that our joy comes from looking ahead. Looking ahead at what? Watch this. I never thought about this, Brother Woolwich. Looking ahead at the end of the trial. So when he says count it all joy, the word count, according to Brother Trevette, and I believe this, I looked a little bit up, and, and I, I'm convinced of it, what it literally means to count it all joy, it don't mean to jump up and down. What it literally carries the idea of is you're counting, you're going through it, you're persevering through it, and your joy is one day is coming to an end. Amen. Amen. And let me give you this to think about. I heard a preacher years ago. Uh, he was... Uh, I can't remember his name. He was an African-American preacher and had a way of saying this. But he preached the message and his message was on his favorite verse in the Bible. It came to pass. He said he loves that verse. And he said, you know why I preach it came to pass? Because it's not here to stay. Amen. Don't you like that? 
The reason I can have joy, he says, it's not here to stay. It's going to pass. The sun's going to come up. There's going to be a better day. My future looks good because I'm a child of God and it gets better farther on. Amen. Let me say this to you tonight. You are God's child. And God's not going to leave you out there by yourself. Thank you, Brother Christian. He's not going to do that. You're not going to walk alone like he just saw. Well, listen to me. The joy we get is one day the trial's going to end. It'll come to pass. Amen. Brother Light tell you, you laying down at Old Baptist and hospital and you're throwing your guts up with chemo and sick and diagnosed with cancer and, and you're going through that battle and probably a few times he thought, man, I'd be better off if I was just dead. The only joy you got is it'll come to pass. Only joy you good can count joy is one day this thing's going to end. And when it ends, there's going to be a lot of joy. Amen. It's like driving into a thunderstorm. Turning on your headlights, turning on those flashers. I was probably in the I drove in last week from Wilson to Wilmington. I was preaching in Wilson. I go back and preach in Wilmington the next night. And I drove in, and I don't know if I've been through an electrical storm as, as unreal down east as I've been. That probably, not as far as wind, but as far as electricity and thunder. My inside of my car truck was rattling when it was thunder riding down road 65 miles an hour. The lightning was so bright one time, so many flashes, I slipped on sunglasses, and it was night. I haven't been there a long time. Then it started raining. And as Andy Griffin would say, it was a frog strangler. Amen. It rained so hard you couldn't hardly see. But you know what gave me a whole lot of help? Is right before I went in that storm, other people were cutting their lights off and cutting their flashers off, cutting their flashers off anyway and cutting their windshield wipers off. You know why? They were coming out of the storm I was getting ready to go into. You know, spiritual application of that. If they got through it, I can get through it. Amen. That's how you can count it all joy. Amen. Count it all joy. Diverse temptations. I mean, listen, I, I believe taking the Word of God for what it is, but I am telling you, I am telling you, <laughs> sometimes we just got to understand, study this book. I've heard people say before, I don't know why in the world they're so been out of shape at what they're going through. They're supposed to have joy over it. It's not what the Bible teaches. Why would the Bible say to us, Brother Woolwich, weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who do rejoice? We're all going to do that, amen? We're always going to do that. Listen, we got to have joyful anticipation when we go through them trials. And then sometimes we just got to have a willful, willful participation while we're in them. We've got to say, Lord, if I'm going through it, you know I was going through it. One writer said something like this, James is calling for our cooperation in what God is doing in our life. Hmm. I want to give you a little something about where some perfume is found. So why is that? You'll see why it applies. It says, I once read about the roses taken from the Balkan Mountains. They produce some of the world's finest perfume. But in order to get that lovely fragrance, the workers must gather the roses in the darkest part of the night. Therefore, they start shortly after midnight and conclude their picking within two hours. The brevity of the work period is based on scientific tests that show that during this interval, the blossoms give their most pleasant sense. Forty percent of the aroma fades with the coming of a new day. In other words, in the night, in the darkest of the night, is when the sweetness of God can be felt the most. Amen. Can I say it's not if you're going through a trial in your life, if you're going through a diverse temptation in your life, don't get bitter over it. 
and try your best to get better. Let God teach you, perfect you, help you to grow up. And I'm going to be honest with you, Brother Cameron, that is really easy preaching. It's easy for me to get up here and tell you that. But I'm going to be honest with you, I want to include myself in what I'm saying because I'll be totally honest with you, a lot of times through those diverse temptations in my life, I complain and bellyache, sometimes feel sorry for myself, and there's a lot of temp- t- trials in my life. I have wasted the trial because I'm not sure I got better. I think I just didn't like it. So I want to encourage you tonight. I, I don't know. I was thinking about you, Miss Linda, back there. Miss Glenda, I mean, back there. Miss Glenda Ballard. I was thinking about you, that sweet, godly husband of yours. Just one of the finest people to ever be around. Down with cancer and what he went through. And I think about him in heaven. I guess that's probably for you the greatest trial that you'd ever been through. You know, I'm amazed sometimes I think about people like Stenny Blue and others who have served God their whole life and sometimes have to die the most agonizing, painful death. And yet they stay just as kind and sweet through it all. You know what I say? God help me to be like that. Miss Glenda, I'm glad to say I can see that you've been like that. Miss Carol, you know many times when you went through a difficult trial, I can say you were like that. I can say a few times I've been like that, but probably more times than not I haven't. So you say, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, preacher, grow up. Realize that it's not if. It's when they're going to come. I hope you don't have any tomorrow, next week, six months, 20 years. But sometime or another, they're going to come. And when they do, they're going to come suddenly and separately. But what you've got to do is, you listen now, you've got to determine in your heart, God, make me better. But God, don't let me get better. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you this? I meet bitter people. Oh, it's hard to be around a bitter person. Somebody just bitter. You know what? A lot of times people are bitter because of things they've been through. I told you a story about that lady in South Carolina, priest too, whose husband left her and the kids and walked out on them, ruined her financially, blew her whole world up. And that night I preached on forgiveness and bitterness. And she was shaking her head, knowing me adamantly. Down at Brother Tommy Turner's church, she was visiting that night, shaking her head adamantly at me that she is not asking God for forgiveness. She is not going to get rid of the bitterness. At the very end of that service, that lady came and fell on that altar, buddy. It took a long time for her to break. I thank God she did. She didn't cause what her husband did. She didn't make him do what he did. She was a good, godly Christian wife. But she got bitter because of what he did. And it almost ruined her. It almost ruined her. What they say about bitterness, somebody else drinks and you don't want to die from it or whatever, it it can get interesting. Life's not always going to be fair. Sometimes it's better. You ever seen people just can handle stuff like that? Somebody goes too slow in front of them or pulls out in front of them and some people can just handle it like, well, no big deal, I'll get there in a minute. <laughs> Can't we say that's me? A few occasions where I'm just, oh, happy day, but some days are not quite so happy. Amen? Trying of your faith, work of patience. What does that mean? Makes you grow up. Makes you complete. Amen? You'll look back on them one day and when you look back on them one day, here's what happened. You'll look back on them one day and you say, boy, that made me better.